What's up, Samonics? Welcome back to a new episode of the vlog. You might have heard that I launched my Kickoff Ionic project, I think, two weeks ago, and the launch was pretty successful. Over 300 signups, I got paying pro members, and I'm super happy about the program. But we started this project together in the beginning. I want to involve you. And so I wanted to share six things with you that I learned from the very beginning, across uh, during the whole project, until now and for the next time. So if you also want to launch a product over the next time, or just have an idea that you might want to work on on someday. I hope these elements will help to make your project a bit more successful. Alright, so you might have an idea for a project or you already got started and my very first uh, tip is to launch fast and iterate. I don't know if you still remember my most ugly version or minimum ugly version, I'm not sure how I called it. It was really totally ugly, but it had the necessary functions to validate the general idea of the project. That was important to me because it was a kind of tricky project and also because I wanted to get people involved in it. This very first version was really so super ugly, but people were still using it because they were interested in the general functionality and because I was open about that this was just an alpha version. Don't be a perfectionist. That's really uh, the easiest thing to kill your project and to kill your whole ambitions. Just get started, launch something quickly and see how it lives in the world. Are people using it? Uh, are they leaving comments? Do you get any questions about the tool? Or is like nobody interested in it at all? During the kickoff project, I actually waited too long, I think. I announced the project in the beginning and I worked out with you how it should kind of behave. That was the starting point. I went into development and then I took a break because a lot of other things happened and that was a mistake because once I continued it really took me like a week to get back into the project. Um, I had to update a lot of dependencies and I had to update a lot of code to actually make it work now again. But then once I made traction I released the alpha version, I waited for a few weeks and then I finally shipped the first let's say 1.0 version real quickly. And now I'm already iterating once again uh, into the next version. So really launch fast, launch quickly, be embarrassed of your first product. It doesn't really matter, but it's interesting to see how people are using your tool. Which actually brings us to point number two, get people involved. For all the other projects I had done in the past, I sometimes uh, talked about this a bit, but then I just suddenly shared, okay, here's my great tool, now use it everyone, and basically nobody was ever using my tools in the way that I hoped they would. In order to not make this mistake, I choose a different path. I announce the general idea. I was very public with the whole idea and the concept, the tools I'm going to use. Um, during the process, I shared a lot of the problems that I encountered with the project, like the schematics, the payments, um, in general, finding more motivation to work on an old project. I really shared all of this on YouTube. I shared basically every week an image on Instagram or talked about the behind the scenes stuff. All of this kind of got the people involved. You left comments, which I'm very grateful for here on YouTube. I got a lot of emails. Um, I reached out to the early users, so that's also a benefit of launching something pretty fast. Through all of this, I gathered feedback and focused really on the important aspects of this tool. All of that helped me to build this very first version, the 1.0 version, with only the features people were really uh, using that they really wanted to see. There are always uh, people that are looking for very specific features and you can't implement everything. So for your first version, focus on the important parts and get the people involved. Also, I heard after the launch that people were kind of anticipating actually the launch because I had shared so much about it upfront. I think I could actually have done more. You can write a medium blog with like weekly or monthly updates about your progress. You can share more of this on other social platforms. You can share more about perhaps even live coding sessions on YouTube. So if you want to build something, get the people involved, get feedback, um, make them really look forward to what you're going to release. Tip number three is have a buy button. So it doesn't have to be like buy now, but you get the name. 
The idea of your first version isn't always to really make a lot of money, although this can happen. Um, it's more still a bit about the validation if you haven't done a lot of validation up front. Initially my plan was to have like a GoPro button and on click I wanted to show a pop-up, GoPro Pro Mode is coming soon, subscribe to our list. I had actually implemented this already and then I decided to postpone the launch a bit and also implement the payment. I think that if you have a real button where people can really pay for your tool, uh, for a subscription or whatever it might be, this is really the ultimate validation if you want to build a project that generates some sort of money for you. Anyone can tell you, yes, really, your tool is awesome, I'm going to buy it, yeah, it will be amazing, and then nobody's buying. But if they enter their credit card, if they enter all the credentials and click the buy button, that is really the validation that your tool is solving a problem and that people are really paying to get this pain solved. I said that the payment integration was painful and it definitely is, but I think it was worth it. I got a lot of pro signups and that shows me that this tool really helps people and also this is a targeted group that I can now also reach out to and get more feedback to make the product even better in the future. So payment is definitely a great validation for your whole idea. Tip number four is to have a feedback channel because users will not automatically know what to do with your page and also they might encounter problems. So I used a free tool called Crisp for a chat. I think there are tons of other chat uh, options for free available. And I was able to fix that bug in a few minutes and I got a new pro member. Others asked about different features or left a great comment. So have some sort of feedback channel in your product. A second thing I had in my product is actually called Product Stash. Um, I really enjoyed this because it's like a board for ideas where people can either upvote the cards that you have already created because you plan these uh, tasks for after the launch or they can also submit and upvote their own ideas. This tool was super helpful and I really like to have this roadmap on my tool. I would definitely recommend it for everyone else to have it integrated. You actually need to upgrade your account uh, within Product Stash if you just want to have an external board. So on their domain, uh, you can, I think, use it for free. But really, uh, keep a feedback channel, uh, either one of these tools or both or uh, whatever it might be, not just only email, but something that really feels close to the users. Tip number five from learning during the launch, block the whole day. I had scheduled a lot of things upfront. I actually made the page available a bit upfront. I had scheduled different marketing messages uh, to Twitter, to Facebook, for Instagram, uh, for YouTube, no specific video because I didn't just want to make a marketing video for you that just then didn't feel right. But there will be things that you need to fix during launch day because you're a developer and you definitely made some small bugs. For example, my application crashed, didn't restart, there were memory issues, I had to upgrade Heroku. Um, if I hadn't been there and monitored the statistics, the page might have been down uh, like half the day and that would be really bad on launch day. So schedule the whole day for your launch and take it off from whatever. This will help you to answer the um, feedback if you have a chat, uh, to fix any potential bugs that you might see uh, in the logs while you monitor it during the day. This gives you time to um, write to all the different platforms like perhaps Hacker News, Twitter, Facebook, uh, on Product Hunt, on Indie Hacker, wherever it might be, but really take the time to promote the launch of your product. And finally, what I noticed, number six, after the release is before the release. So all the weeks that you build up your application before the first launch, it feels like a sprint or a run until this goal when you release your application. But actually, once you're on that day, it's like, okay, the race just started. Because now you have customers, now you have people using the system, you want to keep it up, you want to fix all the bugs you notice, you want to add more features, you want to add more value and everything really just starts on day. It's not like the end, it's really just the start of the next iteration. After just a few days I fixed the first few issues, I added a new uh, roadmap feature or what's new functionality, a history and shipped all of this in like a a minor upgrade of the tool. The release date is not the end of the journey, it is actually the start and now the real work begins 
once your tool is out in the hand of real people in this world. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. The process of building this tool took actually longer than it should have. I had a lot of breaks in this, I lost motivation for the project, but I think this just happens to all of us. It's important that you quickly iterate your uh, product, that you um, get people involved, talk about the product with them, get their ideas, get feedback on it, then make sure that you have some sort of validation like a buy button, which is the ultimate confirmation of your assumption. Have a little feedback channel to react to customers if they got any questions. Take enough time for the launch to prepare everything and not just rush it out because you're done mentally with the product. And also remember that once it is out, it really just starts. If you haven't done it so far, check out kickoffionic.com, my new tool to help you bootstrap your Ionic applications a lot faster with a lot of configuration options and a lot of new things coming over the next time. Of course, let me know if you got any other questions about the launch, about the process or any other topic related to building a SaaS product. I kind of feel like I got a bit of experience now after a few launches, so just leave a comment if you got any questions. And of course, I hope you feel this week a tiny bit more motivated for any side project that you abandoned that you might now get back into it. So enjoy your week, write some great code, and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, silence.